Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You are very welcome to this Liturgy of the Word of the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture us in what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, now Israel, take notice of the laws and customs that I teach you today, and observe them, that you may have life and may enter and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of our fathers, is giving you. You must add nothing to what I command you, and take nothing from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, just as I laid them down for you. Keep them, observe them and they will demonstrate to the peoples your wisdom and understanding. When they come to know of all these laws, they will exclaim, No other people is as wise and prudent as this great nation. And indeed, what great nation is there that has its God so near as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call to him? And what great nation is there that has laws and customs to match this whole law that I put before you today? The word of the Lord. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without fault, he who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. He who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbor, who holds the godless in disdain, but honors those who fear the Lord. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. A reading from the letter of St. James. It is all that is good, everything that is perfect, which is given us from above. 
It comes down from the Father of all light. With him there is no such thing as alteration, no shadow of a change. By his own choice he made us his children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he has created. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Pure, unspoilt religion in the eyes of God our Father is this, coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the world. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general followed the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as their elbow and on returning from the marketplace they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, it was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. This people honors me only with lip service while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human conditions. He called the people to him again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. For it is from within, from men's hearts, that evil intentions emerge. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a man unclean. The Gospel of the Lord. In a certain monastery, when the monks assembled in the chapel for vespers, that is for evening prayer, the monastery cat would get in the way and distract the monks from prayer. So the abbot ordered that the cat be tied up in the chapel during evening prayer. And after the abbot died, the cat continued to be tied up during evening prayer. And when the cat died, another cat was fetched so that it could also be tied up during Vespers. Many centuries later, a cat was still being tied up as part of the ritual, and none of the monks knew exactly why. We could become slaves to doing things out of habit or out of a custom, and never question why we're doing them. This is especially true, I think, when it comes to religious rituals. Last week in the homily, I spoke about marriage. Now for some, for a lot really, the attractiveness of the church building for a wedding, which is secondary, often takes precedence over the religious aspect of the event, which is central. In that sense, we could say, some people marry at 
the church, that's at the building, whereas other people marry in the church. Big difference between the two. If we're strangers to the Mass, for instance, then the church becomes little more than a glorified ministry office, pretty and all as it might be for the wedding. Now the Pharisees, and I think the scribes as well, had invited all, invented all sorts of peculiar customs which barred the people from eating certain foods regarded by them as unclean. But Jesus takes issue with them and their man-made rules and declares that it is not what goes into the stomach of a person that makes them unclean, but it's what's come out of their heart which does the damage. Some parents, for instance, are very careful about what their children eat, but they don't seem that concerned about the harmful things which they look at on the internet or even the social media. Some religions have somewhat quaint customs about foods they daren't eat, whether it be pork or beef or whatever. But according to the Bible, the Acts of the Apostles in particular, all foods are clean. And it doesn't make the slightest difference to one's spiritual welfare what meat you eat, provided, of course, you don't eat too much of it. Applying this to our faith, the danger is we could get caught up with the externals of religion, or worse still, even use them to reinforce our prejudices. The Pharisees did a lot for show, and hence they were quick to condemn those who didn't adhere to their man-made customs and Jesus told them as much. For them, the custom of washing hands before and after meals was more important than being clean within precisely what they were not. In the everyday readings last week, the weekday readings, Jesus compared them, that's the Pharisees and scribes who are pointing the finger at Jesus today, he compared them to whitewashed tombs which, took, which look good from the outside but are full of corruption within. Being clean within will mean there is a correlation between our outward worship of God and what's going on in the depths of our hearts. Otherwise, if that correlation is not there, our worship of God is mere lip service. Jesus said, it's what comes out of a person's heart which makes him or her unclean, because it is from the heart that evil intentions emerge, such as deceit, indecency, envy and slander to name but a few. But the opposite is also true. What makes us clean on the inside is our heartfelt love of God and neighbour. This makes our worship of God genuine and sincere. God the Father has adopted us as brothers and sisters of his only Son and through the ages has stayed with us and kept us in his love. Let us pray to him for our needs and the needs of the world. Let us pray that our faith and reverence towards Christ in the Eucharist may grow stronger. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the people of Haiti who are coping with yet another catastrophic earthquake and tropical storm. Also, the people of Afghanistan, especially those bereaved by the recent bombing outrage, and 
The millions of people in Ethiopia, South Sudan and Nigeria who are facing extreme hunger. Lord, hear us. We pray for the Church that she may be a beacon of hope throughout the world, reminding us all of our responsibility to care and protect God's precious gift of creation. Lord, hear us. We pray for the recently deceased, especially Brian Ashton, who died recently, and those whose lives were cruelly cut short in the airport bombing atrocity. May they enter life eternal. Lord, hear us. Let us pray to Mary who intercedes for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Let us pause now and pray for concerns of our own. Lord, hear us. God our Father, listen to our heartfelt prayer for those in need and grant us the grace we need to live in accordance with your will on earth and so merit the place reserved for us in heaven through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.